Oh my god, I'm starting to shake, man. I know. Just don't open yourself up to them. I'm trying, man. Do I'm not trying. say you're starting to shake. Okay. I am. Don't open yourself up to them. That can be dangerous. Come here! Do it! Stop running! Go back in. Do not f***ing run! Go back in. Come fight me in the dark. I want to provoke the hell out of him. <laughs> Welcome to Come Fight Me in the Dark. The internet's only podcast that has the stones to challenge Zach Bagans to a ghost off. I'm your host, yeah. Joel Kleinberger. <clears throat> and I'm the other guy, Eric Hoofnagel. Other host, also host. We are co-hosting. <laughs> I'm Co- not the tech guy. You're not Aaron Goodwin. You're not my tech. <laughs> no, I'm the host and tech guy. God damn it. I'm the one with the editing equipment. Fuck. Yeah, no, we um, don't have an Aaron. The Aaron just exists inside us. I'm going to take on all comers. You know what? Zach Bagans is just, I mean, he's hes the kingpin. We have to take him down, obviously. He's our yeah. main target. But there's all these no, pretenders. No, the head of the snake, man. Yeah, he's the head of the snake. But there's pretenders to the throne, too. Like, there's those BuzzFeed fucking bros. The unsolved mystery yeah. bros. Mm. There's the there's the guy uh, on YouTube who's like number one. <laughs> the gold beryllium subtle energy microphone. <laughs> number two, the gold beryllium. <laughs> it has magnets in it to make it more conducive to talk to spirits. Oh fuck! Try this gold beryllium subtle energy microphone. Uh, again, it has magnets placed all around it. There's beryllium crystals placed on the inside. It's supposed to create its own magnetic field, making it easier for non-physical entities to communicate through sub-frequencies. Eric, I have to I have to rewind a little bit because I have to update yeah. uh, our our many many billions of listeners. This worldwide yeah. famous podcast that we operate here, where we talk about our niche subject of wanting to fight Zach Bagans to a ghost off. Yes. So <laughs> in 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 between episode two and three, I have now watched five seasons of Ghost Adventures. Yeah, no, it's been a minute. It's been a minute, hasn't it? I really want to clear something up for our listeners because If you listen to this podcast, you might think that we hate Zach Bagans, which that's that's could it be further from the truth. There is there is a a love and respect of Zach Bagans in this podcast. We we he's like a, a, a beautiful white lion. But I have watched five seasons of this show now, and Zach is so cruel to Aaron. We have not even touched the tip of the iceberg of the the shaming to Aaron Goodwin. So I want to say this to Zach Beggins. I and Eric Hoofnagel, by extension, will throw down the gauntlet anytime to challenge Zach Beggins to come fight us in the dark. But Aaron Goodwin, you know what? Five seasons in, he is a saint. So Aaron... If you're out there and you're listening to this, we also invite you to come hug us in the light. In the light! Oh, Aaron, you can be, you can carry the gear uh, of my love. (laughs) Yeah, we have, we both have large tackle boxes for you to carry. And you can put (laughs) any of our little lovely notes in your vest of many pockets. Aaron, you can third wheel in any relationship I'm in. Oh, hell yeah. Dude, I would love to have Aaron Goodwin as my wingman. I think that would be a lot of fun. He'd be such a good wingman. Oh, my he'd God. He'd be like, bro. He'd come up and be like, bro, dude. Like, chick over there is totally checking you out. She's like a 10. And you're like, okay, I don't talk that way about women, but I'm glad you're here, Aaron. <laughs> and then he'd be like, dude, or whatever he does. Dude, oh, my God. Because he never can just say just a straight dude. It's always like, and anyways, Aaron Goodwin is a saint. Yeah. And if I was to create a religion, he would be one of the patron saints. And Zach Bagans might be the devil. And speaking of that devil. That dirty, dirty devil. That dirty devil, Zach Bagans. Let's talk about his third excursion 
into the paranormal where he and his crew investigates Moundsville State Penitentiary. Pen pen fuck. Pen penitentiary? Am I saying that wrong? Yeah. Penitentiary? No. <laughs> penitentiary. penitentiary. Pen <laughs> prison. It's yeah. a prison. Moundsville, West Virginia State Penitentiary. That's where they're going. Cuts in immediately they are lost in the car. And they're all yelling at each other. And I'm like, ooh, this starts out good. Yes! Here's Moundsville. Well, what street is it off of? It has it's to off be. of Lafayette. But, like, also, when, when they were lost and they were all yelling at each other, they still had, like, the music and the, the yelling and confusion... Uh, mm -hmm. and like the show could just be, would be good with, <laughs> if it was just the three of them getting lost on a road trip, just being like, dude, what? Like, no, look over there. <laughs> it doesn't matter. This could be a reality. Sh it could be like a house hunters reality show. And then <laughs> them just going through like that carpet is from a different era. It makes me uncomfortable. And it would be just as amazing. Uh Oh, did you hear that? This house creaks. Oh, no. Oh, no. Bro, bro, did you hear that? Did you hear that? Listen to this again. And he just steps on the creaky floorboard. Unacceptable. Ew! Ew. <laughs> 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 Fucking the production of this show is just so amazing. And I, look, I'm going to start this off with a little question to you, Eric Hoofnagel. Yeah, hit me with it. Would you say, because this is, this is the kind of thinking that I was doing the other day, because Zach Bagans has been around for like 25 seasons of Ghost Adventures at this point, including, apparently, uh, I saw that he did a, a, a ghost investigation. Like, this is how topical it is. He did an investigation. 25 seasons? Yeah. It's still going. Are you fucking he, serious? He just did an investigation at Joe Exotic's zoo to find tiger ghosts. <laughs> It, no! Oh! Yeah. I hate that! No! <laughs> okay, great. Wow. Well, that's what I have to look forward to. Oh, man. That is low. Yeah. Oh, that is so low! This article stated something like, well, I'm happy to give this zoo to her and all the ghosts that go along with it. And I was like, wait a minute. Did he mean literally ghosts? Oh, my God. I'm never going to financially recover from this. <laughs> Just doing the EVPs. And they're like, oh, it's purring. <laughs> yeah, he's purring. He's letting <laughs> us know that he's ready to move on to the next tiger plane. <laughs> <laughs> he's saying, uh, in tiger speak, I was murdered by <laughs> Joe Exotic because I wasn't a kitten anymore. Listen to this EVP that we got. It's clearly a tiger yell. Listen again. Oh my god. That's, that's what the fucking whole episode's gonna be. But, oh, so, fuck that shit. I'm not looking forward to that. But I also am, kind of. Yeah. But we're but there's no way we're gonna get to that point with this. Oh, we will, Eric Hoofnagel. As God as my twenty five seasons. This show is gonna go for as long as Zach Bagans is alive. Okay. Or he well, actually until, comes or the or dark. until he actually yeah, yeah, because like that's kind of the, the, the thesis. Yeah. If he if he doesn't come and fight us in the dark, then we're just gonna keep going. We're just gonna keep talking trash. But um <laughs> You're talking to a master taunter. So, given that Zach Bagans is has been around for like 25 seasons, and he's the only paranormal investigator like out there who's been that consistent, is he technically the human race's like number one diplomat to the other side? Like, if there is an afterlife, mm. is Zach Bagans, like, the most qualified go-between? Diplomat? Hmm. I don't know. He's pretty threatening. He, 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 <laughs> diplomacy, <laughs> any kind of, like, back and forth, it's all just him being like, 
uh, I, I know you're dead, but, like, let me talk about all the traumatic shit that led up to your death. <laughs> And hey, he, and oh, did you lose your head? Wow, <laughs> why don't you come and push me or something, bro? <laughs> and anytime it's a woman, he's especially problematic for the woman ghost because anytime oh, it is, yeah. it's like, did you just touch my inner thigh? Are you trying <laughs> to send me a message? Are you hey, single? Hey, honey, are you okay? <laughs> I'm sorry. I just felt something touch me in this area here. <laughs> So we're we're at Moundsville State Penitentiary with humanity's best diplomat team. <laughs> <laughs> they make it and then immediately just start cutting to interviews with old men in cars that they have yeah. like flagged down in yeah. front of this prison. There's so many where, car interviews of people who are like, yeah. I'm not going to get out for television. Like, <laughs> No, and it's like an old dude with a beard who we get to know, Redbone. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. And they, they <laughs> he, he just gets pulled over and he's like, he's like, yeah, well, I, they boiled a man to death in there. And then it cuts <laughs> to another old man. He's like, he's like, if you die in there, your spirit's in there for good, I tell you. <laughs> This episode is is like so weird. It's such a contrast with the last one, the Houghton Mount Mansion haunting, because oh, it's yeah. like the exact opposite. Where last oh episode, totally because it's like a badass location. It's you, so you cool. come into this episode being like I'm I can't wait for and, Zach to get shanked by a ghost knife. Yeah, and then all the characters they introduce right away are incredible you got mullet mom you got red bone you got the weird prison guards you got the fucking guy that has no balance how are you doing sir are you ready right? right, right, yeah. i got uh, i have no balance no no balance at all Bro. my my favorite part <laughs> they walk up to this house and this old man opens the door <laughs> <laughs> hey, did you, you used to be a guard at that prison? He's like, hey, hey. and he's like, could we ask you a couple questions? And the old man goes, hey, hey. and he just like, like a board falls down backwards. Like he just straight up dies. It just like, not even like, whoopsie. He just planks backwards into his own house. Yeah. <laughs> and I've never seen Zach so concerned. And he turns, he's like, oh shit, no, no, no. Like, oh. Yeah, don't step on your glasses. Oh, nope, you just stepped on your glasses. I'm going to get your glasses. Let me get you out on the porch oh. for this interview because we're still going to make you interview despite the fact that you're obviously a kooky old man who can't stand. Yeah, like, like you can trust anything he says after he answers the door and falls down backwards immediately. And they pull him out of his house. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. That part was so funny fucking funny it's literally the the scene in willy wonka where, where willy wonka falls over except for he doesn't get back up and zach bagan no 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 it's not a flourish <laughs> it's not it's not a a cool thing it's just getting old and my favorite part about that is that so they, they eventually get this old man out to the porch where he could be like, yeah, I was a guard there. They do. Yeah. They stepped on our backs during the riot. But the thing is, yeah. they, 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 they block a shot so that this old man can be interviewed on the porch, which means there's no point to him being shown on national television to have no balance and fucking falling <laughs> over. Like there's, it doesn't serve anything other than this show Zach Bagan. Except that it's, it is so funny. <laughs> like I feel bad, I feel terrible that this old man has no balance, and like if Zach Bagan's hadn't been there, he may have died. <laughs> yeah. You know, he like Zach Bagan's came in like life alert, <laughs> pulled him up, got him to not step on his glasses, and then dragged him out of his house <laughs> to talk about the most traumatic thing that's probably ever happened to him being in prison during a prison riot yeah he's like tell us about the time you got shanked he's like <laughs> oh yeah so 
not only does Zach Bagans go into haunted places to torture the spirits of the dead by being like, remember that time you got killed. No, he's he's ready to torture the nearly dead. <laughs> he wants to pre pre traumatize this old man's ghost. I just I just love that they fucking kept that part in. And yeah, I agree. It does make me sad to see that happen and it does make me feel bad to laugh as hard as I did at it but but it was just it was like he just he died it looked like he just straight up died and I thought I was like no like did they just they just filmed an old man just dying in his doorway I I'm I'm so shocked. I'm shocked that they didn't cut to a Zach Bagan's ghost o- ghost over a Zach Bagan's voiceover <laughs> that said ghost over. With, with Zach Bagan saying, "Did the suggestion and memories of the traumatic paranormal experiences knock this old man off his feet?" And then they just cuts <laughs> to him being like, "Oh no, I don't got no balance I at all." Just- I don't have any balance now. <laughs> you young boys don't even know. I love that he's so nonchalant about it too. Like you know, this is this is obviously like a daily occurrence for him. He opens the door and then he just falls over. And then he just falls. <laughs> <laughs> there are the males here. <laughs> I I am in love with this town and its characters. Like it. Oh, the the woman right before the old man. <laughs> Mullet mom. His clear. <laughs> Mullet, mul- yes, mullet mom comes to the door and, and Zach's like, Zach's like pretending like it's the first meeting yeah. and she's like coming to the door, like smiling at the camera. Like she had clearly <laughs> been, <laughs> been coached. She's been asked already. She's like, hello, I have, I have stories about the ghosts. Have you ever had any paranormal experience over there? Yes, we uh, caught up full body apparition down in the basement really yes i did capture every everybody on this fucking block is an amateur ghost hunter because they all use the terminology like she's like yes in the basement i caught a full body apparition a full yeah (laughs) not a picture of a ghost a full body apparition which is you know zach is just like behind the camera just mouthing full body apparition (laughs) <laughs> don't nod at the camera oh. just say the words oh body orb orb we saw some <laughs> orbs there it is damn dude look at this place holy look how big it is the setup of this this haunting is that this is a this was voted one of the most violent penitentiaries towards the end of its life before it got closed in 1995 and a bunch of people got murdered zach said a thousand people had died in its walls you know they talked to other guys like an ex-prison guard who this guy uh i think his name is pete davis uh no pat davis he you know he talks about how traumatized he was from those riots and that's very sad but i'm glad to see him living his best life because he's got like he looks like a a boss from like Redneck Rampage, the the <laughs> the fucking shooter from the like. He looks like uh, he's got the big floppy leather hat on, but he's also got like a bunch of piercings. Oh, that poor man! I I and he's got the big old like Mitch McConnell jowls. Yeah, he's popping out, and he's like he's like I'm still in therapy to this day. I. I got shanked in my butthole, but he, and I saw a man get his face pulled off. He does the best. He does the best delivery of a story so far, where he's telling about being in the gallows room and hearing the gallows go Ugh. off, and he scares yeah. the shit out of Zach Bagans because he does like a full yeah, yeah. boom, boom, boom. And you, you can tell the oh. little glint of a smile at the side of his his feet his face. He was just like, "Yeah, I'm gonna get this city boy. I'm gonna get him good." <laughs> that was a great moment because Zach definitely went into fight or flight for yeah. a second. He was about to throw down. His soul left his body for just a f- brief moment. 
<laughs> so, you know, you got these guards who have all said that, like, throughout the, the operation of the prison, you know, you would see a shadow on the walls and people would report there being an escaped prisoner. And then when they would investigate, there would be no one there. And... There's yeah. like people have been grabbed in the sugar shack, which I'm sure a lot of people throughout the prison's <laughs> history have been grabbed in the sugar you know, shack. If, if if someone told me they got grabbed in the sugar shack, I would never suspect <laughs> it was a ghost in a prison. I would think, well, that's a sketchy bar or a really bad sex club. No, so there's uh out towards Kitsap County in Washington, there's a town called Gorst. Gorst, Gorst, Washington, which is, it's like, as you're driving through it, it's just three bikini barista espresso stands and a strip club. And the the sugar shack sounds like it belongs in Gorst, where you pay $5 to get grabbed by the owner of the sugar shack, (laughs) the owner and one dancer. (laughs) This is my place. You can watch me if you want. But if you come in, you get grabbed. Did you enjoy it? Well, sure. Yeah, nice. <laughs> in comes the next interview with the best man ever, Redbone. Thomas Redbone Richardson. It's a whole new uh, experience, believe me. Tom Richardson. They call me Redbone. Prison. It's where we place the worst of humanity. I shouldn't got cooked your pot of beans there. Brown bean. Peel him up. You gotta do what you gotta do. Driving My in on, God. in a red fucking Geo Metro looking ass car. It sounds like it could go a ma- maximum of 15 miles an hour. <laughs> Chewing his tobacco and spitting it in like an old Jack in the Box cup. <laughs> Oh, hey, I, I was in there. And they're like, what, sir? And he's like, I was in there for nine years. He was in from, I got it here. He was in from uh, 1967 to 1983, which makes me think that if, if, Eric Hufnagel, if he was actually an inmate, and we'll get into that. Oh. If he was an inmate, he was serving a murder rap. Dude. Redbone? You don't get called Redbone unless you've killed somebody. Mm-hmm. You don't get mm-hmm. called Redbone because of your fucking barbecue. Well, I mean, you could, but, like, no one's going to call you Redbone. Oh, no, but I have a theory. I have a theory because I want, and I, we can talk about it, but let's let's introduce Redbone a little more because he is, like, a <clears throat> legendary figure because I love, I love the thought that he just sees some goth boys with cameras down the street, and he's just like, eh, well, I guess I'm taking a left today. And he's like, who are these goddamn city queers? <laughs> <laughs> and he rolls up on him and be like, hey, boys, what you doing at that prison? You know, I was in there. I killed a bunch of people. My friends killed people. I saw people baked in beans. I killed, <laughs> I killed a man with my own <laughs> anus. He's just... and It was a riot. You had to do what you had to do. Here's the story of Redbone. He apparently was in prison from that. He was in Moundsville from 1967 to 1983. During that time, he saw people baked in beans, hung and all sorts of everything. He firmly believes in the paranormal. And, And he had a buddy who got killed and his buddy apparently killed five or six Five guys, to six which people! A- five to six people! But you know what? It was prison. You have to do what you have to do. He's my best friend, and he killed five or six. So that's the weird thing. Like, I feel like if you're gonna... With murdering people, you should... It's probably a more definite number, right? Not five or six, like, scratching your head like, Did I kill that boy? I don't remember. <laughs> Fucking, I, lo- I, I, lo- I just love that quote. They killed him up. Now, Ray did kill five or six guys in here, but you know, you don't. <laughs> it's just like he's... It's he's, prison. Yeah. Gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> but you know what, Joel? You, 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 you doubt Redbone, but his tears, they don't lie. 
Oh, no. Oh, because no. when he finds his cell, he finds his cell, and he's like, there's my initials right there. And he gets in there, it's number nine. He gets in there, and, and they, they're like, oh, you, you spent a bunch of time in here. And he's like, I spent nine years in here. And he starts crying for mm-hmm. real. This mm-hmm. hardened man with a fucking Confederate flag on his shoulder, which oh, yeah. I'll tell you, as great a character as this guy is, I bet there was a lot of scenes they couldn't use. Where he was spouting some harsh racism. <laughs> I'm very uncomfortable right now. They cooked a man in the beans! <laughs> they cooked a man alive in the beans! They boiled him till his meat fell off. <laughs> That's right, and he came out and he was no longer a human being. Woo! But up, but up, but up. No, uh, I, I love that because Zach Bagans is like, oh, so they put him like, oh, you know, it's a riot. They put him in and it's just pork and beans. He's like, oh, no, no, brown beans. Pork and beans. Yeah, no, he was cooking brown beans and the riot went on and he happened to be there. They snatched him up, threw him in there and just stood on the lid. He couldn't get out. They cooked him until his meat fell off. That is a great recipe for trap souls. Oh, yeah, he remembers every detail because he tells this story over beers at the local tavern every night oh yeah he has to or he's like did you know i saw a man got cooked in the beans (laughs) and the bartender's just like oh my god and it was brown beans right and he's like i killed all of them when they came at me (laughs) but it was prison we had to do what we had to do Everyone in the bar says we had to do what we had to do. Everybody raises their glasses and they drink to Redbone, even though he's a fake and a crisis actor. That's right. I see. Oh, here's my theory. We're getting into it. Oh, no, Joel. Okay. I've watched this episode like five times and I have my head cannon about what's going on here because Moundsville State Penitentiary is closed no longer it is it's no longer a prison it is just a tourist attraction i don't know about you but when i'm making my vacation plans i don't think man the ass end of west virginia in a town with a population of 10,000 white people is where i want to go so i can see a prison i'm calling it <laughs> no. right now that this is a reverse scooby doo situation they're making a what? haunting to try and bring people in and red bone is the bait here's what i'm thinking come with me come with me on this okay you're turning into alex jones here but like it's fine here's where here's where i'm thinking tom styles is introduced in this episode as the internal coordinator of the prison he got crabbed Uh in the sugar yeah he got his he got grabbed on his in the sugar shack he got grabbed on his arm. <laughs> Tom Stiles is the internal coordinator of the prison. He's seen not a lot of return, not a lot of tourist dollars. This town has 10,000 people in it. No one wants to visit. No one's coming to Moundsville. He needs to drum up tourism. He creates a plan. He gets Tom <laughs> Redbone Richardson to come drive by anytime that there's people there being like, oh, hey, you're checking out the prison. I was locked up in there. <laughs> oh. Now, here's my proof. Here's, oh, okay. Here's my proof. <clears throat> yeah, you have some evidence here? You one. Fucking. Number right. one. The Tom, one. <laughs> the red boned conspiracy theory. <laughs> he, you mentioned him crying. He cries a lot for a big, tough man that so willingly comes into a prison why is he driving by the prison what? why is no. he hanging out by the prison what is he doing why is he well maybe the other maybe somebody called him and they were like hey there's a bunch of people filming outside the prison that oh yeah. you talk about oh yeah. incessantly mm-hmm. yeah you know who that person who made that call was tom styles internal coordinator of the prison <laughs> no oh, no they get redbone tom styles calls redbone up he's like redbone we've got a mark and redbone's like 
I'll hit the Geo. And he gets in his shitty <laughs> Geo Metro and fucking peels out in the gravel driveway. He drifts around the corner and he's like, I was locked up in there, boys. Let me show you. And then he goes on they his... They cooked his, a man alive! He goes on the tour. He hits all the big points. This is where they stabbed Ray. He was my best friend. He killed five or six people. He goes to his cell. He's like, I slept in here for nine years. And then he It talks, has his fucking initials on the... Did, did, you, did, did uh-huh. Styles put his initials on there? Yeah. It's all a plot. TR, very common. It didn't say Redbone in there. Mm. And... Here's another bit. Redbone makes what I can only describe as a sales pitch. No, that's if you want here. money, you go to the bank, right? Mm-hmm. If you want to see an entity, you go where a lot of people were killed. And most likely you'll see one. And this is that place. And this is that place. He is making a pitch for a haunting of Moundsville. He is in cahoots with Tom Stiles. He's a crisis actor. And... <gasps> Redbone mentions uh, Redbone mentions that in the big riot, that's when he saw the guy b- getting baked in beans, right? Yeah. This is it. This is my this is my gut punch. This is this is the number one piece of evidence. Ooh. He says uh, okay. that during that riot, he saw the boy ba- baked in brown beans. The boy baked in brown beans. That's a good tongue twister. Um, <laughs> that riot, the big riot that everybody talks about. Guess what year it took place in? Uh-oh. It, it was 1986, three years after Redbone <laughs> was out of prison. He didn't say he didn't say he saw it happen. <laughs> he didn't say he saw it. He said that that there was a snitch who got baked in the beans. I seen a guy cook through a pot of beans there. It was during a riot, he was a tattletale. I seen a guy cook through a pot of beans there. I see a guy cook through a pot of beans. I see a guy cook through a pot of beans. No, 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 no. That's okay. You've reminded me of another piece of evidence. He did say he saw. Also, a... they said that there's multiple riots. Okay, I'll give you that. Maybe, maybe. But he did see the bean the... riot of eighty <laughs> of eighty two. In the. Where they were, they wanted pork and beans. That's why they threw them in the brown beans. And they like, had no more pork. To be pork. So they, decide, they decide to cook the the nearest rat. Yeah. Oh, we're gonna get some long pig in there. Cook mm. Tommy Tommy Two Tail. <laughs> so here's here's another bit of evidence because Redbone slips up in his performance. He says mm. uh, about the guy who gets. Uh, the guy who was murdered, well, who we'll get to, he's like, oh, well, he was a tattletale. That's what we call him in prison. No, no one calls him a tattletale in prison. You call people a tattletale when you're in fucking kindergarten, not in the clank, goddammit. Redbone, crisis <sighs> actor, not a real convict. All right, Joel. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not convinced, but I will, I will con- consider... Your, your hypothesis. They continually, people throughout this episode reference seeing a shadow man. Red Bone is the shadow man. I don't, I don't like this. I don't feel good right now. I don't either. I have a stomach ache. So the haunting of this place, like the main thing that they go through, they, they interview a bunch of people. People have been touched. People have been scratched. People say they see the shadow man, a.k.a. Red Bone. Um, they <laughs> <laughs> they show a picture. They show a picture that someone else took. That's right. Of the shadow man. And who is Redbone. And yeah. uh, so in the Sugar Shack, a lot of people get grabbed. Um, and then the big haunting is in the boiler room where R.D. Wall got stabbed a lot with uh, dull shivs. And and they cut his fingers off and then they cut off his head. Yeah allegedly cut off his head this is this is the second decapitation in three episodes so this this, again you're very doubtful joel you're very very doubtful in this episode i smell i'm wondering what the fuck is going on i i'm smelling a reverse scooby-doo situation they want to use (laughs) zach bagans to drum up business for this penitentiary they got Redbone in oh, there. Penitentiary? Fuck off. I can't. Penitentiary. 
<laughs> um, fine. You can you can be a big old fucking negative Nancy about this. Listen, I just it's Redbone is I I have been taught throughout my life to not trust good things happening, and Redbone is too much of a good thing. He how amazing. How amazing is it as a ghost hunting show that that man drives around on that street just by happenstance and rolls up to you in his Geo Metro to be like, yeah, boys, I was in there. I saw people cooked in beans. It's too perfect. It's I mean, setup. good things happen. This is this is a long time ago. OK, Obama was president. <laughs> things were going OK. Like everything was much better back then. You don't remember. You have forgotten, Joel, <laughs> that that good things used to happen. This is true. I am I I am cynical. I've been in quarantine for nine months. I haven't seen anybody, and I don't. I doubt the majesty of Redbeard. Redbone. <laughs> Redbeard. Arr! <laughs> I was locked up with Redbone. We were shellmates. He Arr! was a pirate. He killed five or six people, but he was a pirate. That's what you gotta do. He was the finest seaman I ever served with. Arr, 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 arr. He... <laughs> he was in prison, but he was still a man of the sea. That's right. He would sail the seas of seamen, if you know what I mean. Anyway, that's <laughs> <it>. <laughs> Oh, Christ. There's only one flaw in my red bone is a crisis actor theory in that he doesn't show up to be the shadow man on their ghost hunt. You know, if he really was a crisis actor, you think he would be in the fucking prison wearing like an all black suit. Just being like, oh, oh, my God. Oh, man, I would love I would love to see the like the like version of this where he has like made a deal with <laughs> with styles yeah tom uh, yeah that like he gets to fucking hunt these three city boys <laughs> in this prison that's locked down all night and he gets to hunt them boys that's right and he's just in there with his fucking prison knife and he's like hey <laughs> It's just coming out of the dark. It's the only way that Redbone can like maintain a sanity. Like he's gotten out. He's he's living a good life. He's connected with his granddaughter and his children. I got a granddaughter. He's you know <laughs> he's living his best life. But once a year, he he works with the interim director of of Ooh, Moundsville State. He's like Pen- the anti Santa. <laughs> and he goes in there and he's like, "You're gonna let me haunt them boys." And then <laughs> Styles is just like. Yes, sir, Mr. Redbone. Yes, sir. Like, you know what happens. Yes, Mr. Redbone. If I don't get a hunt once per year, it's like, you boil them in the beans. That's right, the brown beans. And that's why they call me Redbone. Because <laughs> I always get my red bone. I'll kill you, the laugh. I'll kill you, I'll kill you, I'll kill you. Joel, I'm going to jump in here with a... um. With a Zach Bagans uh, fashion report. Ooh, a Zach Bagans fashion report. Hit it! Can you get a thermometer real quick? Look, look, look at me, dude. dude. Wow. Wow. Look at my body. Whoa. Check this out, man. Dude. You look weird, bro. Zach Baggins looks like shit in this episode. Yeah, he does. He is dressed like he went to Goodwill and he had six dollars. <laughs> yeah, that, he, yeah, he is, and he looks very uncomfortable the whole time. Like none of the pizzazz of previous episodes or future episodes. He just looks dumpy. Just so, he like he. Yeah, do you think he was depressed? Do you think he was sad? Because he just doesn't. There's nothing. There's no. There's none of that. That Zachness. That big bag and yeah. He doesn't have the flair. There. There's. There's zero roses. No skulls. No glitz and glamour. I don't know. I. You know. I don't think they had a lot of that good energy going in. And maybe 
Maybe because it's in West Virginia and he had to fly, which I have learned. And maybe I can introduce this segment right now just for fun. This segment I want to call the Bagans Bible Hour. I, Eric Hoofnagel, I found Zach Bagan's autobiography on Amazon. Oh, 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 that is right. Oh my God. Yes. (laughs) I found uh, I Am Haunted, Living Life Through the Dead, written by Zach Bagan's, ghost written by Kelly Cricker. And Mm. let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, if you look up this book, you'll see the most amazing cover you've ever seen on a book in your life because it's Zach Bagans doing the Chris Angel uh, mind freak pose with (laughs) a a spirit of light and a spirit of dark caressing his body. One of the very the the spirit of light is touching his nipple. Wait, let me look. I have to look this up right now. What's it called? Like. It's called I Am Haunted by Zach Bagans. And if you look at the cover, the the Spirit of Light's hand doesn't even, like, it looks like it's purposely misdrawn to make sure that the finger can caress oh, his nipple. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> oh, no! Oh, God! As it looks longingly into his Chris Angel-looking face as he's just doing the pouty magician pose as his nipple's getting stroked. And his... Oh my god, and his fucking mustache and goatee. Oh. And of course, the fucking. The, and of course, one of the ghosts is like got a super hot chick's yeah, face. Yeah, and it looks like it was. That ghost is. I'm telling you, Zach Bagans has a very specific fetish, and it is ghost women. That is the oh. only thing that gets him off, is ghost women. I think I know why the fashion in this episode might be so shitty is because he's terrified of flying. He's terrified of flying. He's terrified of flying in chapter 12 in chapter 12 called Romania subtext. A little salt goes a long way about his quest to find the real Dracula. (laughs) Oh shit. He like went full Van Helsing. That is so tight. Oh, yeah, dude. And he opens this chapter by saying, I hate flying like a pirate hates a toothbrush. Oh, my God. Zach. Um, This book is amazing for many reasons, uh, most of which is the number of, like, movie references that he makes on each page. Just at the beginning of this chapter, I think there's three movie references About three weeks before I flew, anxiety began to build up. And the second I got onto the plane, claustrophobia punched me in the gut. I was like Ed Norton in Fight Club. I could envision crash after crash. No, no! Oh, you know he loves Fight Club. He fucking loves Fight Club. But uh, this line stood out to me. (laughs) Because he's talking about, like how much flying affects him and he says when the cabin doors lock and i know i'm going to be trapped in that aluminum tube for eons (laughs) i hit a new level of panic most people would recommend psychotropic drugs or relaxant but i can't do that i hate putting that stuff in my system so all i can really rely on is my ipod it saved my sanity on several occasions. And we know what he's listening to on that iPad. Wake me up! <laughs> wake me up insane! <laughs> I can't wake and up! He is grabbing the seat in front of him and just grooving out to that on his trip to Romania to fight Dracula. Something else I learned about Zach Bagans is this chapter is he loves cheese. Uh, wow. With that body? <laughs> I know, right? He must be keto. (laughs) This is how Ghost Adventures crew gets locked down. I can't wait to get locked in here. I'm just pumped. You guys pumped? Yeah. Let's go get this started. I'm nervous. Okay, so so now I gotta I gotta jump in on uh, the the first threats of the night because they get locked in 
And this time, it's real. Because it's a prison. Because it's a prison, which actually, like, the lock-in is pretty real. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty real. Like, they don't have to drill into the wall of an old mansion and put in a tiny padlock. This one, (laughs) you are real locked in. Yeah, it's very unlikely that even Aaron Goodwin could smash the walls <laughs> with his bare fists. So, so one of my favorite things about this episode is uh, Zach playing the part of the rookie guard. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so they come in and he's like, he's like, just to let you know, we can't see shit, and it's only our our cameras that we can see through because we're all on night vision. And then he just gets into the middle of this room and he's like, he, (laughs) he pulls out the worst, worst acting I (laughs) I've witnessed on this show yet where he goes, he's like, come on, you convicts. Uh, I'm the new guard in town. And I say, you get in your cells and uh, you never come out. So, I have to back you up a little bit because that's preceded by one of the silliest things I've ever heard him say, because he does do the thing where he's like, this is how dark it is, but he does it because he commands everybody. He's like, okay, from here on out, no flashlights. I want to ambush these ghosts. Yeah. (laughs) I want to, I want it to be an ambush. And then he proceed immediately oh to start yelling, like, okay, good ambush, Zach. Like, yeah, I'm the new guard. Oh, so good. I'm the new guard in town. Put yourself up against that great there. I'm the new guard. I'm telling you to get in your cells and never get out. He's, it, it, honestly, it, like, sounds like a very, very small child playing cops and robbers. The next step is they go down into the sugar shack where people were touched. And Zach tries to bro bro guilt Aaron into being there by himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, you and get he, grabbed. You, you, he, Aaron, you, you get to stay. You get grabbed. And Aaron gets this look on his face that is so <laughs> honest. It's like the most honest, like, uh, like bullied yeah. face. Like where he's like, oh, fuck. No, no, no way, dude. No. no. And then immediately it cuts to cuts to them being like, Nick, Nick decided he he would take his place. Nick takes the bullet for Aaron to stay down in the sugar shack. And Aaron and Zach are using the gold beryllium subtle energy microphone. The gold beryllium subtle energy microphone. It's all the glitz and glam and none of the actual functionality. Yep. Uh, all of the promise. Because that comes up and he brings it up and he is excited about it. Oh, he's so He sad. pulls up the fucking beryllium. The gold beryllium subtle. Thing. The gold beryllium subtle energy microphone. Subtle energy microphone. <laughs> Incredible. Incredible. He pulls it up again and I got so fucking excited. And they did shit with it. It got nothing. It got zero. And he he went on the whole explanation about how it makes it's better for ghosts because it creates its own magnetic field. Like why? What are ghosts made of fucking metal? Like what are they attracted to the? Why why does that work? With crystals, it's got <laughs> it's got crystals in it <laughs> and magnets. Magic everywhere in this bitch. Just because crystals and magnets are hard to understand <laughs> doesn't mean that they do things that we that like are beyond our understanding. Just because they're uh, they're hard to understand doesn't mean they they apply to other things that we don't understand. Fucking magnets. How do they work? And then and then and then they didn't give a light to Zach. Mm-hmm. And so Zach doesn't know where he is yeah. and he's being driven verbally by Aaron, yeah. which is really funny. And Aaron's like, bro, bro. And, and Zach's like, did you just hear that? <laughs> he goes, yeah, dude, it just came from right over your shoulder. <laughs> and then Zach goes, Oh my God. Oh. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, and then Z- and then Aaron goes, you're okay, dude. It's all okay. And he's like, I know. 
He gets so mad. That's the best turnaround in the episode. That's what I'm talking about. Is because Aaron does is like, yeah, dude, it sounded right behind you. And Zach freaks. You heard that right? I heard that. It was right behind your shoulder, dude. Shut up, man. Well, don't move. Don't move. You're safe. It's a brick wall. No, I know it's safe. It's fine. I'm not scared. And then he immediately says, I'm not scared. Yeah. No, no. I'm, I, I love this moment because this is one of the, one of the rare moments where Zach loses a few alpha points to Aaron, which, which is funny that Nick wasn't there to witness it. Oh, and then, oh, oh, and then it doesn't even fucking stop there because then the next fucking part. So, so first, first you get this really funny part where, where, where Zach is on the ground and he's like, he's like, dude, feel my back. And Aaron goes, (laughs) feel it. (laughs) And he's like, yeah, no, like it's, it's, it's like, it's weird. I don't know, dude. And he's like, okay, I guess. But then they get Nick and they're all hanging out. And Zach is like. I'm going to sacrifice myself. He's like, I'm going to stay in the room and I'm going to contact this spirit. (laughs) And they're like, they're like, okay, dude. And they start leaving and Nick starts being a dick. And he's like, he's like, Ooh, should they shut this door? Ooh, should I lock it? Ooh, I don't know. And, and Zach's like, what the fuck, dude? Oh my God, stop it. And Aaron's like, Dude, you don't want to do that, dude. You don't want to fuck. It. Don't don't fuck with him right now. <laughs> and it's just this amazing moment where it just continues the alpha loss. Dude, Nick calls him a wuss on camera. Quote and quote, yes, wuss. Yes, and he gets so mad. <laughs> he calls him a wussy. That's one letter away from calling him a pussy. Which, like, if if Nick ever calls him a pussy. <laughs> It's going down. I mean, we know canonically that Nick leaves the show and I know that it's not on good terms to go back to the Bagans Bible study to look at it. The thank you and dedication page. He lists Aaron Goodwin, Billy Tully, Jay and Ashley Wosley and a bunch of other people. But guess what? Nick not mentioned. Ooh, no. Yeah. Ooh. Spill the tea, bitch! Yeah, yeah. Holy shit! Something happens there. Oh shit! I didn't even know mm-hmm. that. I did not know that. I, I, I. Oh, yeah. fuck! That's we good. got. We we're gonna see what happens eventually. I'm sure. Don't run! Don't run from this. This part that you're mentioning is also one of my favorite parts because it's like definitively proof. That Zach Bagans is the bro at a bar who starts fights only when his bros are there to hold him back. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Because when he's left alone, he even admits to yeah. himself and the audience he's looking in the camera and he's like, he's like, uh, yeah, I can't really see anything. I can only kind of like see what's behind me through this camera. And I'm not being very, uh, provocative. Uh, provocative i'm not being very pr- provocative because like Cause i'm alone aaron and nick yeah. aren't here he he cops <laughs> it's so he cops funny the fact that he's only fucking he's only an alpha as long as his bros are there as long as as long as his bros can hold him back well of course typical yeah. alpha Bro, hold me back hold me back so i can yell at these ghosts hold me back hold me back but yeah he fights like oh proud boys yeah <laughs> Proud boys against the ghosts. Ghosts would win. Yeah, they would. <laughs> the only thing that they get this whole episode, other than like circumstantial stuff, like Zach is like, now one of our static X cameras goes out of focus for a second, as though it's trying to focus on something, you know, in frame. It's like, eh, okay. It no, they got nothing. They got nothing. And then they they, 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 they stretch it out because they're like, they leave suddenly. Yeah. You know, because like most episodes they leave and you're like, well, that was tight. Yeah. This time they leave and you're like, wait, are they leaving? Yeah, they're done. What? They're going to come back, right? Well, because the only thing. No, they, they leave. Get, they got nothing. They got two things. Is the EVPs. They got, they got 
the the photo that has some weird glowing eyes behind Nick for some reason, but it looks like just a light. Which is like not eyes. Yeah. It's a reflection off of some copper. Yeah. And then they got an EVP said that says, I'll kill you. And they bring it. To to Mark and Debbie of Reno, Nevada. Yeah, because if Las Vegas <laughs> is the asshole of America, Reno, Nevada oh is God. just a fucking dingling piece of shit on the outside of That's it. That's the taint. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they are the most classic Reno couple. Oh, my God. Mark Constantino, who talks like an extra out of the fucking Sopranos. Like, oh, yeah, you know, we're audio people. We do the ghost stuff. <laughs> Oh, they are be- they are beautiful people. Uh, Mark and Debbie Constantino, they must be reoccurring characters because in the Zach Bagans Bible, they are directly thanked. Whoa! Unlike Nick. Yeah, unlike Nick. What? That is wild, I- dude. I am very glad they're coming back, but also like this feud mm-hmm. that is growing oh. between Nick. And Zach is like, mm, oh yeah, tasty, mwah, mwah, I can't, tasty. I can't wait. I'm so excited. I can't wait for it to have no evidence of why that happens in the show, and for us to spend hours extrapolating our own meta narrative on their relationship. I'm a little out of breath because there's a lot of stuff going on right now. This episode is defined by its wonderful characters. Some of them more characters than others. Redbone? Question mark. I'd say it, you know, the episode had a decent EVP, had a scary location, and great interviews. Yeah. That's what it had going for itself. But there were no apparitions. Nothing. No physical attacks. Uh-uh. No marks. Mm-mm. No moving objects. Zero. So since we've wrapped up the episode, not great evidence, great characters, can't wait to see more of the cost, condus, Costastinos, Costastinos, Debbie and Mark, because I think Debbie has a deep lust for Zach Bagans. That's a side relationship that's developing. That's just in my head. But this is another conspiracy theory, Joel. That's right. That I can't wait to hear some evidence for, but like I don't I won't support it until I hear evidence. Uh I mean, if you're into the paranormal and your husband is Mark Costatino and in walks Zach <laughs> Bagans hot off the oh, trail. Oh man, and they pan they pan over from the couple to Zach filming them, and he's got his little fedora on, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which he apparently will not go to Vegas or Reno without his fedora. <laughs> that's his. That's his Vegas hat right there. It's like, yep, I'm home. This is. This is. Otherwise, no one knows who he is. That's Vegas, Zach. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, it is now time since we've wrapped up this episode to challenge Zach Bagans to come fight us in the dark. This is very dangerous, guys. It's like we're going in for the attack. I would be ready to perform an exorcism. Show me your power. You guys are playing with fire. Shut up, Joel. I want Redbone. <laughs> I so get like Redbone. Redbone. You want Tom Redbone Richardson. That's right. TR. That's my initials right there. You know, you know, you know, you know he knows how to fight in the dark. <laughs> yeah, I mean, him and his boy killed five or six people. <laughs> you know, in the he dark. knows how to. He knows. He knows how to make a shank out of anything. That fucking paper cup he was spitting in. <laughs> he just needs that and the spit, and he can make a fucking shank. Yeah, he he'll just he'll just put the tobacco the wacky tobacco in his in his beard take out some of his beard hair and just make a, a solid oh, hair yeah. shank use that oh <laughs> ooh, and you know that's a dirty shank that beard you just see like around his mouth it's like all yellow <laughs> from all those cigarettes and all that chew and like oh he hasn't cleaned that thing and he just puts that shit just wraps it around his shank gets you God damn, you're going to die eventually. Yeah, it's like a Komodo dragon. It's not so exactly. much the one bite that get, it's He it's, stabs, <laughs> then waits. Yeah. He just counts down the days on his cell wall, just like, 
It's been seven days since I'm been, I've stabbed him. He's looking real sickly. I'm going to eat that red bone soon. <laughs> I'm going to get my red bone. So there's one... I, I don't want to be a naysayer. There is one problem I see with your potent, your 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 ask here. Cuz I like the idea. Okay. I want to involve Redbone in this. However, given who we are, <laughs> do you think Redbone would actually come fight in our corner? Uh, I think I could dress the part. I mean, I think I could dress properly for him to to be like he's a good boy and then just go after spiky hair mcgee uh (laughs) seriously i would just put on a flannel and some jeans and i could just spit a few times and say the (laughs) n-word he would just he would all he would be in my in my corner immediately okay so we're assuming he hasn't listened to the previous two episodes both of which we i think we said a cab as well as a number of other things uh and in this episode yeah no we talked shit about the cops in the first episode second episode and today i'm gonna say fuck the police fuck the police fuck you hashtag come fight me in the dark cops and um i think i think if we can convince Redbone that we're good old american boys then he would fight for us and for me easy my challenge to zach bagans i'm throwing down the big one eric oofnagel oh shit because you know what zach bagans talks a lot of shit about how what a professional provocateur he is how he's the master taunter of the fucking of the paranormal (laughs) how he is willing to do anything to get evidence but you know what i don't think he is so this is this is my gauntlet i'm throwing down zach bagans come fight us in the dark and we're gonna go to the showers of a prison and we're gonna drop trow and spread our cheeks that's what I want to happen. <laughs> I'm saying that I... Wait a minute. Will, in the dark? In the dark. I'm going to present... I'm going to challenge Zach Bagans to present our rectums fully nude <laughs> in the dark in a prison to see exactly how far Zach Bagans will go to get evidence. I don't think he's got the balls to do it. Wow. You know what? You know what, Joel? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that your challenge... Uh, works very well with mine because if <laughs> I think that if if Redbone is present, no one will be presenting their anus. Uh... No, uh, now, now I'm just now that you said that I have this <laughs> this this image of me and Zach. We don't tell Zach Bagans that Redbone's there and we're just dropping trow in the showers in the dark and there's Red bo- <laughs> Redbone's just covered in baked beans just like <laughs> with his like hair shift just like mm. and then Aaron just presses a button and the cell doors open and then Redbone just scampers out into the hallway ready to get his <laughs> Redbone. <laughs> Trying to get his bone red. <laughs> so that's, I think that's the Trying challenge. to get his bone all red. We are, me and Zach Bagans have to go to a prison, drop trow, present ourselves. I think we should have our makeup done by Debbie Constantino to really <laughs> make Ooh. the whole. She can do our makeup <laughs> and get the whole package. I don't know, Joel. That that sounds like a third challenge. Okay. Which. Okay. I don't know We're... that 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 maybe that's that sounds <laughs> like maybe an optional. Yeah, if Zach Bagans really wants to turn up the heat, we can have Debbie do our makeup and do our our clothes, and then yeah, she can she can add some like some like uh, eyelash thickener to your your ass hairs. <laughs> is that all you can do? Is just make some stupid little noises? Is that not gonna make me scream like a little girl? Dance floor is yours. Show yourself. Ugh, I think, I think this is probably our best challenge yet. Drop and trow. In, I think so. In, I think it's a hard one. It, I think it's a hard one. I think the two marry well. Yeah. Um, it, it, there, there are two challenges that that somehow multiplied the challenge. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, they came together and they made the challenge 
that much darker. <laughs> and so, speaking of how dark it is, Zach Bagans, come fight us in the dark. Drop Trow. Do maybe it. Maybe get touched by Redbone. We'll see. But come fight us in the dark. You do it, you dumb bitch! <laughs> <laughs>